Hey guys, Tony, KD8RTG. Today I'm going to do a video on the Yaesu FT60R. Um, I've done a few videos on this actually um, over the past few years and I've never actually done a review on it. So I thought I'd do a review on it. Um, I'm likely going to get rid of this radio or at the very least uh, upgrade my every everyday radio um, to something different, um, which I'll get into towards the end. But I thought I'd do a full review of it. Now, um, this radio has been out since I think 2004, so it's been out for a while, and it's uh, very commonly recommended uh, for new hams. Basically, that's kind of what I was recommended to get. Um, I got into ham radio now about five years ago, and that was right before the Bofeng radios came out. Um, there were the Oshang Chinese radios, which were, you know, also, they did not for a little bit when I got started, so they were recommended somewhat too, but they were around 100 bucks. And this was more like 170, 180, I think, when I got it. It's about 150 right now. And um, I basically decided to go ahead with it, get us something a little bit higher quality. You know, I saw this recommended all over the place, so I thought I'd try it out. And, uh, you know, when I initially got it, it was my only radio. It, I used it in my car, connected it to a mag mount, um, used it, you know, as a base station. Sim also, I use a Slim Jim roll up J pole, and it works great with that. Um, and kind of as I've, you know, Got, done more and more in ham radio and got new radios. This has kind of just been my, my travel radio. Whenever I go on vacations, um, trips, you know, I bring it with me. Um, when I go to Dayton Hamvention, it's always the one I carry around with me during the day. So it's a great radio for that. Um, in terms of my use case, what I use it for is I use, mostly use it for two meters, a little bit of 440 work, and then I also use it as an airband scanner. One of the great things about this radio is it is it can work as a scanner. Um, it works from 108 megahertz to like uh, almost up to a gigahertz, basically. Um, without they, they lock out some frequencies for cellular, but it works as a scanner for AM or FM within that range. So um, I've used it a lot as an airband scanner. I've done some listen to some public safety, uh, weather band is useful, that sort of thing. Um, so it's just kind of a general purpose radio, and uh, you know, kind of going over what I like and what I don't like. Um, so that wideband scanning feature is great. It's not as fast as a purpose-made scanner, but in my experience, it's more than fast enough for how I use it in terms of scan rate. Um, the AM, it seems the sensitivity of the AM receiver is so-so. Um, you know, I've used this at air shows to listen in, and there it's generally fine, but uh, as things get a little weaker, I don't think that the AM receive functions that great, but it's certainly usable. Um, in terms of kind of the ham side of using it, I mean, it sounds good on two meters and 440. Easy to use, easy to put uh, CS or C CTCSS tones or PL tones in, um, and that sort of thing. And I I've used it a lot with repeaters too, of course. Um, you know, in terms of hardware, it's a solid case, solid enclosure. I believe it's, I believe it's uh, market is water resistant. I've used it in the rain with no issues. There's like some rubber seals over stuff and that sort of thing. Never submerge it, you probably shouldn't submerge it. But, you know, for every day carrying around use, it'll be fine, I think. Um, the only thing I've noticed is there's a little nick on my, the plastic that covers the LCD. Not really sure when that happened, but I've dropped this radio a few times, so no surprise that there's a little dent there, but absolutely no functional issues. Um, the rubber duck antenna holds up very well, too. It's uh, pretty nice, I think, and uh, yeah, no issues there. Belt clip, same thing, I've used the belt clip a lot with no issues. Um, let's see, other than that, the one of the big features I like on this radio over a cheap Bofeng is the squelch knob. Um, frankly, you know, I have a few Bofengs that I use for some projects and lending out, but I think what makes them most unusable to me is the lack of a, of a real squelch feature, and particularly a squelch knob. They have a menu squelch which works so-so, but the knob is huge, because as you're taking this different places, noise levels change, and this just makes it so easy to, uh, to use. Um, let's see, in terms of what I don't like, there's a few, few things here. Probably the biggest is on the mic speak, speaker jack, um, this is where you can connect a headphone adapter to listen with headphones or a speaker mic. Um, the way it works, you, oh, you basically plug an adapter in, but the way it's made is the plugs don't want to stay in. They kind of push out. Um, I thought it might have been the rubber around it, so I tried cutting it back with an X-Acto knife, but that didn't really help. Basically, the problem is if I plug something in, um, it very easily pops out, and then, and the worst part is when it pops out, it'll actually short push the talk, so it'll just start transmitting. 
and um, that's a that's a real pain. Typically, what I've done is I put a rubber band around the radio over like the speaker mic. I have a right angle speaker mic connector, and it holds it in. But that's kind of a clunky way to do it. Um, and I've heard other people complain of the same thing. So you know, considering how old this radio is or how long it's been out, you know, you, I think they should have figured out something to fix that, but they haven't. Um, that's probably my biggest gripe with this radio. Um, the other thing is on the zero button, there's this feature that enables wires, which I believe is like an echo link type system that Yesu implemented um, and it puts in the radios or it, it's, you know, you need external hardware connected to a computer, but it's basically activated on the radio by a certain tone progression. Um, so when you transmit, it transmits a tone first. Now, this system never really caught on in the States. I think it was used widely in Japan, um, but never caught on in the States. And the problem is, is if you bump the zero button, it'll turn that feature on, and then every time you push to talk, it'll play a tone at first, which isn't the end of the world, but it's kind of annoying. Um, other than that, there's really not much I don't like about it. Uh, the one thing I would point out is, like I said, it's been out for over 10 years, so it's getting kind of old. Um, you know, it's true, it's tried and tested um, and works great, but it's just getting kind of old. The LCD is good, nice and bright, uh, with um, easy to read display, very basic, but you know, now we're getting graphic LCD displays on radios and, and more features for not much more money, frankly. Um, so I'm gonna be upgrading from this radio, uh, probably the one that includes APRS, maybe one with D-Star, I'm still deciding what I wanna upgrade it to just as my general purpose radio that I'd take almost everywhere. And um, not because there's anything wrong with this radio, but just because my interests in ham radio have kind of outgrown it. So I wanna have a built-in APRS uh, system. That's my main want in a radio. You know, I'm looking at D-Star. Um, I have another radio for DMR, but uh, yeah. So I thought I'd do a video before I potentially get rid of this radio. Um, the other thing, oh, the other thing I did want to mention is there are tons of accessories for this radio, including like cheap knockoff ones. So you can get speaker mics, you can get uh, AA, like alkaline battery AA battery packs. Those are really nice to keep one on hand uh, in case your battery dies. You can fill it up with some some double A's. Um, adapters, power cords for like a car, um, and there, of course there's tons of different antennas you can get on it. Um, there's some commonly recommended bigger, there's a diamond one, I'll put the uh, model number in the description, I can't remember the exact model number, but there's a very commonly recommended diamond uh, whip that's a little bit longer that I like um, to add. But you know, as is, this radio functions really well. And uh, I, I still do recommend this to beginners to look at at least. You know, I haven't really looked at this end, end of the market much in HTs in a while, um, but it's still a solid performer. And there's no wonder that it's lived this long. I don't know how much longer AC is gonna produce this radio, um, but you know, for the time being, it's still a great radio. So uh, go ahead and leave some questions in the, in the comments if you have any. Um, love to help people pick out new radios and that sort of thing, or any suggestions for me to look at a radio, <laughs> a new one, um, but uh, that's about it. So 73, and we'll see you later.